Hi everybody, I know you're anxious to see what's going on in the sanctuary, so I want you to meet Bill. Hi Bill, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Bill is busy laying the carpet. So, how do you think this room is going to look when we're done? It's looking super amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it yourself, people. It's going to be wonderful. I hope to see you on the 3rd and 4th. Bye. Hi everyone and thank you for joining us again this week. I'm here at the church uh, with um, you know, my friend here <laughs> waiting to greet you on October 3rd and 4th, Saturday or Sunday between 2 and 4. We have a number of things going on here. There will be scheduled tours to see the sanctuary that you're going to really want to see. Um, and you just can do that by registering a time to have a tour. Go to our website, www.thamesviewuc.ca and put your name in for a time slot so that you can be able to take a tour. Um, you'll be required to wear masks and we have uh, gloves for everyone and it'll be very, very safe, small bubbles going in for tours for short minutes. Um, so I know that that's something that you'll be able to do and are hoping to do. And in a minute, you'll hear from um, one of our workers who's putting down carpet. Also on the third and fourth, we're asking you to bring a non-perishable food item. The outreach committee is doing our food drive. It can be a food item or a gift card from the grocery store. Uh, either would be wonderful and I know be so appreciated, especially at Thanksgiving, to make sure that the outreach committee will um, get those to the right people and they're distributed in time for Thanksgiving. It's a busy week. Our committees are up and going and finding ways to carry on God's work through Thamesview during this pandemic. Um, there's some creative thinking going on and we want you to stay in touch and to be part of it. You'll hear all kinds of new and exciting programs that are coming. Uh, I hope that you're uh, watching the children's programming if you have children in your family or if you just want to enjoy it. Um, the Kids View uh, programs are wonderful and the CE committee has really been working hard to make those effective and ongoing. So let's get started.
Hi Thames View. I'm sitting by this old apple tree today um, because our first reading is a little bit different. Today I'll be reading After Apple Picking by Robert Frost. My long two-pointed ladder is sticking through a tree toward heaven still, and there's a barrel that I didn't fill beside it, and there may be two or three apples I didn't pick upon some bough. But I am done with apple picking now. Essence of winter sleep is on the night, the scent of apples, I am drowsing off. I cannot rub the strangeness from my sight. I got from looking through a pane of glass I skimmed this morning from the drinking trough and held against the world of hoary grass. It melted, and I let it fall and break. But I was well upon my way to sleep before it fell, and I could tell what form my dreaming was about to take. Magnified apples appear and disappear. Stem end and blossom end, and every fleck of russet showing clear. My instep arc not only keeps the ache, it keeps the pressure of a ladder round. I feel the ladder sway as the boughs bend, and I keep hearing from the cellar, bin, the rumbling sound of load on load of apples coming in. For I have had too much of apple picking. I am overtired of the great harvest I myself desired. There were 10,000 thousand fruit to touch, cherish in hand, Lift down and not let fall, for all that struck the earth, no matter if not bruised or spiked with stubble, went surely to the cider apple heap as of no worth. One can see what will trouble this sleep of mine, whatever sleep it is. Were he not gone, the woodchuck could say whether it's like his long sleep, as I describe its coming on, or just some human sleep. Our second reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13 to 15. So if you, if you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will send rain on your land in its season, both autumn and spring rains, so that you may gather your grain, new wine, and olive oil. I will provide grass in the fields for your cattle and you will eat, and you will be satisfied. This past Tuesday, we officially rounded the corner and entered the season of autumn. Now, I always approach autumn with mixed emotions. The early weeks of fall are generally one of my favorite times of the year. In fact, I remember reading a little poem about, about autumn. Warm days, cool nights, blue skies, bird in flights. Brilliant hues on the trees, autumn's moon, falling leaves, orange pumpkins, ripe corn ears, frosty fields, best time of year. <laughs> I think a lot of us like this time. Roadside stands with barrels of squash and apple picking and apple cider and pumpkins and fall mums. Just a certain something in the autumn air that speaks to the human spirit. But autumn is somewhat of a sad time of year as well. The warm days of summer are waning, flowers and much of the foliage is dying, fields where once vibrant crops grew are stripped bare, trees, well, they'll become stark gray skeletons against a sometimes gray and misladen sky. Cold weather will soon be approaching. But autumn brings with it its own splendor and wisdom. Robert Frost, as you just heard in one of his autumn-related poems, recounts how he spent autumn days picking bushels and bushels of apples from his orchard. The abundant harvest he had hoped for had almost become too much. He had worked himself down. He was tired and weary and ready for a good rest. This is one of the lessons that we learned from autumn. Everyone and everything needs a time of rest. The earth, in some respects, progresses into a period of rest. Fields lie fallow. Some forms of wildlife go into hibernation and a period of rest. 
Autumn would serve to remind us that we humans, too, need to take a time to rest. A Sabbath time of rest to feed the spiritual part of us. A time to rest to observe nature and the world around us. A time to rest from those thoughts of the, the issues of life. And to think about the things that are really important. To take a break from the worrying about the issues that we seem to hear about non-stop. At the same time that we need rest, we realize that there are things we didn't get done and will never get done. Frost, in that story that we just read after apple picking, lies in bed trying to sleep with thoughts running through his mind that there are apples he didn't get picked that could have been and should have been picked, and he regrets that he didn't. One of those few apples would have to go. He couldn't do everything he needed to do because now was the time to rest. Most of us tend to berate ourselves for the things that we don't get done. I should be doing this. I should have done that. I'll let you in on a little secret. This type of regretful thinking about things that didn't get done is a common complaint in the life of every minister. I hear it all the time from colleagues. There are always phone calls that should have been made and members who should have been visited, books or articles that should have been read, prayers that should have been prayed. As with Frost lying awake and thinking about the apples that should have been picked, every minister I know, including myself, certainly has had the experience of lying awake and obsessing about the many things that didn't get done. You've probably done the same. You may have had that same experience as you obsess about those things left undone. But we all need rest. Everything done or not done. Such is something Autumn and Robert Frost can teach us. Another lesson of Autumn is the need for preparation. Just as Autumn beckons us to gather in the produce of the fields, whether it's potatoes or pumpkins or apples, in preparation for the days of winter soon to come, Autumn would speak to us of the need to make spiritual or soulful preparations in our lives. Autumn would lead us to ask, are you ready for winter? Are you prepared for the difficult days that are sure to come in the weeks and months ahead? Do you have adequate spiritual provisions laid in store that will support you when the cold winds of life blow and the world starts reeling around us again? When that sudden illness strikes, or an unexpected death of a loved one comes, or financial struggles visit, do we have the faith resources that will sustain us? Have we given thought to and come to grips with the big questions of life, having to do with illness and suffering, trouble and death? And is our relationship with God such that we can ask for and draw on the strength and comfort that God provides? Are we comfortable with our place in a community of faith? Are we still, even though not together, reaching out and holding on to those who would support and sustain us when the winter of life comes? Jesus, as I'm sure you know, spoke on different occasions about the importance of life's preparations, just as the autumn season does. Yet another lesson of the autumn season is that change is inevitable. This last week, when the days were warm and the sky deep blue, seeing orange pumpkins starting to be piled everywhere and the leaves beginning to change, I made the statement that I've made a number of times before. Ah, don't you wish you could just stay like this until Christmas Eve and then it can snow. <laughs> you may have said that too. The weather was perfect. I didn't want it to change. But we all know that things change. Flowers die, leaves turn brown and fall, and beauty fades. As much as we sometimes would like for things to stay the same in our lives, we know they can't. Children grow up and leave home. Parents grow old and pass away. The physical beauty or handsomeness we knew as young adults fade just a little. A job is phased out or comes time to retire from a profession that we love. A good friend moves away. Things change. 
Some of us find change to be difficult. The season of autumn is change in part and parcel of the cycle of life. And the earlier in life that we come to understand that change is normal and to be expected and accepted, the better we'll get along in life. And at least one other lesson autumn holds before us is to enjoy the beauty of each day, today. No two autumn days are exactly alike. The sky will be different tomorrow. The wildlife we see will be different. Even the leaves on the trees will be different as colors change overnight and some begin to fall. You will be different. So each new day is a fresh invitation to sit and enjoy the beauty of the day that God has given us. Elizabeth Lauren observed everyone must take time to sit and watch the leaves turn. But how we need to remember this, not just in autumn, but every day of the year. Each day holds a particular blessing and aspects of beauty to be entered into and enjoyed and appreciated with a spirit of gratitude to God for the day, for our lives, no matter what the circumstances in this world no matter of a virus, no matter what we're going through. Though we often think of natural beauty in the season of autumn, there are other beauties in life that we can take note of and be grateful for all through the year. The beautiful smile of children or grandchildren, a meaningful conversation with a good friend, a nice meal with a partner or a spouse or, or a friend a thoughtful gesture by someone we meet in the course of the day. Yes, autumn beckons us to stop and enjoy the particular beauty of each day as it comes to us. And so, as we commence this glorious autumn season, may we take time to stop and reflect and learn the spiritual lessons and wisdom autumn has to offer. And may we take time to sit and watch the leaves turn and experience and express gratitude to the Creator for autumn splendor. Amen. Hi, Tim Sue. We're going to sing a uh, hymn that we sing quite often, For the Fruit of All Creation. And it's based on a Welsh tune that we often know as All Through the Night. So sing along. I've put it in a really nice key for you. <clears throat>
journey together. Every day and in every season, we find our home in you, God our provider, and discover that every moment spent in your presence lasts beyond all imaginable time. You watch over us in the night and you cradle us in your arms as tenderly as a parent cares for their children. And in the day you strengthen us to do the work that is before us. Full of wisdom, imagination of creation, you humbled yourself that we would be able to learn about you and to learn to love those who are around us. As witnesses to your grace, you call us to act in ways of love and peace to everyone we meet in this life, to show compassion to those who need to know they're not alone, to work for the good of those who are victims of injustice or prejudice, to offer what we can to those who have little, to care for those who are ill or grieving or lonely. May we be the hands and face of Christ, especially in these days of anxiety and uncertainty in the fresh breeze on a summer's day, in the leaves dancing across autumn's lawns, in the crisp new snowfall crunching beneath our feet, and in the new life that we know will flower in the spring from everlasting to everlasting. You offer your grace to us, spirit of life, and in return, we offer you our thanks and our praise in Christ's name. Amen. Have a great autumn, and we'll see you next week. Bye.